Parichinna ivagyana tanna se sati kevalaha Svayang prakashate hyatma megha payeng shumaniva Parichinna finite eva as if Agnanat because of ignorance tat that Nashe sati, when destroyed, kevalaha, alone, svayang, by itself, prakashate, reveals, he, verily, atma, the self, megha, clouds, apaye, when pass away, angshuman, the sun, eva, like, it is only because of ignorance that the self appears to be finite. When ignorance is destroyed, the self, which does not admit of any multiplicity whatsoever, truly reveals itself by itself, like the sun when the cloud is removed. Namaste. So this is a very important verse. Let's look into it piece by piece. It is only because of ignorance that the self appears to be finite. How does it appear to be finite? Because it's covered by upadis. Huh? The body, the mind, the world, the other senses, and so many apparent objects in the world in Jagrat consciousness, and in the mind in Svapna consciousness. So this leads us to believe that the self is finite, but it's not. As soon as the ignorance is destroyed by knowledge, we can see from our own experience that the self is actually infinite. And what are the characteristics of the infinite self? Well, that's given in the Chandogya Upanishad. Wherein one sees nothing else, hears nothing else, and understands nothing else, that is the infinite. Wherein one sees something else, hears something else, and understands something else, that is finite. That which is infinite is immortal. That which is finite is mortal. So just take a look at your own experience. Everyone feels that I am real. This feeling of I has to do with consciousness. This is the symptom of the self. The presence of the self is consciousness. So our consciousness is one. We don't have one consciousness today and a different consciousness tomorrow. No, we wake up in the morning as the same person as when we went to bed last night. <laughs> now, this personality is an upadi. And when the personality, the body, the mind, the senses, and their objects are removed, then one comes to the infinite. And in the infinite, there is no consciousness. Consciousness is duality. Why? Because it reveals something else. Wherein there is something else. One sees something else, one hears something else, and so on. That is duality. There's a wonderful, powerful quote from Brihadaranyaka Upanishad about this. Because when there is duality, as it were, then one smells something, one sees something, one hears something, one speaks something, one thinks something, one knows something. But when to the knower of Brahman everything has become the self, then what should one smell and through what? What should one see and through what? 
What should one hear and through what? What should one speak and through what? What should one think and through what? What should one know and through what? Through what should one know that owing to which all this is known? Through what, O oh Maitreyi, should one know the knower? This is an incredibly deep and powerful verse because it goes right to the heart of the difference between unity, advaita, and duality, dvaita. When there is something else, when there appears to be something else, as it were, huh? when there is duality, as it were, that means the duality is only an appearance. It is not the reality. But most of us go through the day, every day, immersed in duality, thinking this and that, knowing this and that, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and so forth. All these different objects. But all this is just an appearance. When there is non-duality, when there is no other, only the self, then what is there to see? And through what? Because there's no body, there's no eyes, no mind, no senses, and no world. This is very deep, but it cuts to the core of the issue of the finite and the infinite. The infinite is that which has no boundaries no differences, which is advaita, non-dual. And the finite is that which is dual, subject and object, consciousness and that which is perceived. So the perceiver is always the self, and the perceived is the object. And if we observe ourselves, if we watch our experience closely, we will see that the self is always the same. And every time we check, <laughs> we'll find the self is the same. Even in dreams. Last night I had a dream. <laughs> Me and the mother were looking for a place to live, to rent. And... We were trying to go back to this place that we had found in a previous dream several years back. This is so crazy. And we couldn't get there because there was a big construction project. So they were building a freeway. <laughs> so all these objects are false. Why? When we wake up in the morning, there's, they're gone. There's no sign of them. Uh, this is duality, as it were. Actually, there is only the experiencing self. There is no uh, house for rent. There is no construction project. There is no freeway, you know. There is no driving around and looking for a house. That's all maya, see? So that's finite because it's limited. It's gone when we wake up in the morning. And similarly, the world that we see around us in waking consciousness disappears when we go to sleep. So all of these objects and the senses that perceive them are temporary, limited, finite. But the perceiver, the seer, the knower is not limited because it is always the same. This is the self. This is Brahman. And anyone can find this self in themselves simply by knowing that it's there and then looking for it. See, this is why when you realize Brahman, when you realize the self, you're going to have a good laugh 
Because here you've been thinking all this mystical, schmistical, esoteric stuff, right? <laughs> and it's just you. It's just me, the self. So everything that appears to be different from the self is maya, illusion, temporary, finite, false. Because it makes a difference between the seer and the seeing, the knower and the known, the perceiver and the perceived, the subject and the object. This is duality, as it were. Meaning, there really isn't any duality because all there is is the self. When the knower of Brahman sees that everything has become the self, well, it always was the self. It doesn't become the self, only in our understanding. Before, we thought it was different. We thought that these objects are real. But actually, everything is the self. How is that? Because everything that we perceive is perceived by the perceiver, and the perceiver is the self. So actually, those objects exist only within the self. They're only part of the self or within the self. And because the self has no boundaries, has no internal differences, Therefore, there is no object, actually. It's simply an appearance. Try to understand. When you have a crystal, a fine piece of crystal, like a healing crystal, a quartz crystal, or something like that, and you put it on a red cloth, it turns red. When you put it on a blue cloth, it turns blue. But when you take it it's, and just hold it up to the light all by itself, you can see it actually has no color. So the self is like that. When you put an object in front of it, it takes the form of that object and reflects it like a mirror. But when there is no object, for example, during sushupti, deep sleep, then it's simply blank. It's clear, like a crystal or empty like a mirror. This is non-duality. This is the self. And this is accompanied by a feeling of tremendous bliss. So we should cultivate this through hearing, shravanam, thinking, mananam, and then meditating and realizing it, the didyasanam. These are the three stages of self-realization. So we're going to continue with Atma Bodha in the future, and all these things will gradually be revealed to you simply by hearing again and again. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shibaya.